Welcome to our lecture online. Now here we have a function which is very very common in using circuits or using applications of circuits and it's a pulse train. So we have a pulse input, maybe a voltage input and we need to find the current in the circuit based upon this kind of voltage input. Notice that a pulse train is defined by the amplitude of the pulses, the width of the pulses and the period between the pulses. And the general format of the Laplace transform is equal to the amplitude over S times the quantity 1 minus e to the minus the width of the pulse times S divided by 1 minus e to the minus the period of the pulses times S. So that's the general format. Another way of looking at it is you can calculate the Laplace transform of the very first pulse and then divide it by 1 minus e to the minus TS, T being the period between the pulses. So either one that's the exact same equation will give you the Laplace transform of a pulse train. But you might wonder, well, where did that come from? Well, let's try to show you how that is done. So what we're going to do is we're going to add up the Laplace transforms of each of these individual pulses and add them all together and hopefully we'll get the same result. All right, so this becomes the Laplace transform of the function is going to be equal to the first one, so that would be the integral. Now we have to integrate from 0 to 2 of the function, the amplitude. Let's say the amplitude is 3. So let's say a is equal to 3. Then we get, um, uh, let's see here, we get uh, 3 times e to the minus st times dt. All right, so that would be the Laplace transform of the first pulse. It's the function times e to the minus st dt. All right, so plus now the second pulse that will be integrated from 5 to 7 and that will give us 3 e to the minus st dt plus the next pulse and there we get uh, integrated from 10 to 12 that would be 3 e to the minus st dt and then again you can see how the pattern just simply repeats that would be 15 to 17 3 e to the minus st dt all right and so forth of course that will then of course be however long the pulse train is all right so what do we get for each one of these so this becomes equal to so we have one over uh, we have three over s e and that would be minus because it's a minus exponent there so minus three over s e to the minus s t evaluated from zero to two and then we get plus uh, and we'll put brackets around it and minus three over s e to the minus s t evaluated from uh, five to seven and then plus uh, we get the minus 3 over s e to the minus s t evaluated from 10 to 12 and I think you can see the pattern here. All right so next what are these equal to? So this now simplifies to let's see here plug in the upper limit we get minus 3 over s e to the minus 2s plug in the lower limit and I guess I get, I'll go like this, it's minus 3 over s times the quantity when I plug in the over limit I get e to the minus 2s minus the lower limit is 1 alright plus here I get minus 3 over s times plug in the upper limit I get minus e to the minus 7s plug in the lower limit I get e to the minus 5s this next one we get plus minus 3 over s times plug in the upper limit e to the minus 12s minus when you plug in the lower limit e to the minus 10s and I think you see the pattern it keeps going like that now we clean this up just a little bit so turning this around we get the following we get this is equal to minus 3 uh, oh wait a minute I'm gonna get rid of the negative sign so this becomes 3 over s times 1 minus e to the uh, let's see here e to the minus 2s okay and then here we get uh, plus 3 over s times when I, I made this a plus a uh, reverse order here we get e to the 5s minus e to the 7s or that would be of course minus 5s and minus 7s like this 
and then plus, same thing again, 3 over 5 times, reverse the order, e to the minus 10s, minus e to the minus 12s, like this, and then plus, that keeps going. All right, hmm, what do we do now? Okay. Okay. Ah, I think I see something. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to separate these. First of all, I can pull out a, a 3 over S. So this becomes 3 over S. And then I have a 1 here. And I have a plus e to the minus 5s. And I have a plus e to the minus 10s. And of course, plus e to the minus 15s, and so forth. Okay, like that. And then I can have a plus 3 over s for the other terms. But I want to pull out a minus e to the minus 2s. So I'm going to pull out a minus e to the minus 2s, like this. And then when I do that, for the other terms, and I pulled out the negative, and I pulled out e to the minus 2s, I will be left with, on the first one, a 1. On this one, a plus e to the minus 5s. And on this one, plus e to the minus 10s. And then plus e to the minus 15s, and so forth. Like that. And so now notice I have this infinite series and I have this infinite series. Now what can we do with that infinite series? Now we have to remember the following. We have to remember that uh, 1 plus x plus x squared plus x cubed plus x to the fourth plus and so forth. That equals 1 over x minus 1. Or is it 1 minus x? Hmm, I gotta go look it up. Make sure I have this right. No, it's 1 minus. It's the other way around. That makes sense. 1 minus x because you want x to be smaller than 1. You want x to be less than 1, and then you can do that infinite series like that. That makes sense because that will still give you a positive value. All right. So if we look at that and we look at this, we can call minus 5s uh, or e to the minus 5s, we can say e to the first power, e to the second power, e to the third power. In other words, we have the very same thing there, except, I guess we can go like this. We can go e to the minus 5x quantity squared. So in other words, in this case, we can say that x is equal to e to the minus 5s. That's right. That's how we're going to make the comparison. If we do that, we could then write that this is equal to 3 over s times 1 over 1 minus x. That would be 1 minus e to the minus 5s. Like this. And then here we have plus 3 over s times minus e to the minus 2s like this, times the same thing, because that's the infinite series, so we have 1 over 1 minus e to the minus 5s. Like that. Notice that these are common terms. 3 over s is common, and so we could factor this out. And so when we do that, we get the following. When we do factor this out, we get 3 over s times, in the numerator, we'll get 1 minus e to the minus 2s. And in the denominator, we'll get the common factor 1 minus e to the minus 5s. And this is therefore the Laplace transform of this particular pulse strain. And notice when you look over here, you notice that the width is 2, the period is 5, and the amplitude is 3, so we get the exact format and exact Laplace transform 
of that particular pulse train. Now, of course, once you know that, you don't have to go through this process to find the actual Laplace transform. You could simply use the shortcut method by remembering this equation or remembering that equation. But just in case you would like to know where that came from, this is how that was derived. And that is how it's done.